Hi, so today I'm going to do probably the only video on setting up a voice over IP phone system that any of my subscribers may actually have interest in, which is the coolest feature which I can't believe I left out of that entire video series. So recently I did a video series on how to set up a free voice over IP phone system, or well, by free I mean just the software, but how to set up a phone system very affordably that scales that you can use in an enterprise environment as well as a small business environment. And today I want to show you single-handedly the coolest feature that you can use here if you use Repair Shopper, which is one of those CRM programs that's, des that's designed for tech support companies or any kind of company that has different tickets for different clients that deals with remote client, anything like that. It's, it's a really cool piece of software that I use I found it about three and a half years ago. Now, one of the best parts about Repair Shopper as software, above all else, the best feature is that the person, the proprietor of Repair Shopper named Troy, if there's a feature that's missing that genuinely belongs in the software, he will add it. So I'm not going to say that the reason I was attracted to the software was because it was the best software on earth. I liked it because every time there was something that could be better, I could contact him and talk to him about it and he would change it. I wanted it to post to QuickBooks, he added it. I wanted there to be a sign-in screen for so that people can make their own tickets, he added it. I want there to be integration with free PBX, he adds, he, he adds whatever it is that I want to add so that it'll make my life easier. And this, by far, is the coolest feature that you'll ever see in any type of CRM software. So, have you ever had people come into your store and say, after let's say that they, you, uh, they bring you a device, you fix the device, you have a 45-day policy where if, um, if they don't come back in 45 days, you sell it, it's been three months, you call them, no response, it's been six months, you call them, no response, it's been nine months, you call them, no response, and then after a year, you finally fucking sell it and you get rid of it. So you've sold it, but one day after you sell it, they come back saying, hey man, I've been trying to call you. Why didn't you pick up my phone calls? Why'd you sell my stuff? We spoke on the phone. I talked to you and you said that you were going to hold it. Let me show you how it is you can figure out that they're full of shit. This is a really, really cool feature. So the way this is going to work is that the free PBX system is going to want a caller ID database. So every time somebody calls, it's going to look to a database in order to provide you with a name on the phone of that person. Now, Repair Shopper has a database. But the really, really cool thing here, the thing that I absolutely love, is that Repair Shopper is set up so that every single time the uh, free PBX system queries the Repair Shopper database, it leaves a note in that person's ticket that says that they called from their number. So watch, check this out. I'm going to show you how you would set this up from start to finish. So first thing I'm going to do here is just open a new window. And I'm going to get the screen capture set up so that you can see my window. And it's going to ask me for my password, which, of course, I always forget. Here we go. Luckily, Google remembers it there. So I go, let's see, I don't know, where do I go? Here we go. You go applications, caller ID, no. <laughs> uh, here we go. It's admin, caller ID, lookup sources. I don't, I don't remember all this stuff off the top of my head. So we go to admin, caller ID, lookup sources. And now I set up repair, right? Now, after I go to here, what I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to pick up the phone because somebody's calling me. Fucking telemarketer. Mother. Anyway, so I'm going to add a CID lookup source. You hit add CID lookup source. And the way you're going to put the, it's very, very simple. So you're going to just put in the attributes that I had over here. So I, I set this up three years ago, so I honestly don't even remember what I did. Anyway, so source type is going to be HTTP. The host is going to be uh, your yoururl.repairshopper.com. So for mine, it's rossmangroup.repairshopper.com. So let's, you know, I would put in rossmangroup.repairshopper.com. And then for path, uh, you put... API slash caller ID, very simple there. And then the query is going to be DID equals number, right? Now, after you do this, the way what's going to happen, once you set this as your CID lookup source, once you've added it, I called mine repair. I go to connectivity, and then I go to inbound routes. Whoops. What do I, trunks maybe? Man, I forget how I set this up. 
I legit okay. First, I gotta delete this. Delete this. Delete the hell out of all of this. Delete the shit out of it. Okay, so what I do is I go connectivity, I go inbound routes, I choose my repair line over here, and then I'm going to choose my caller ID. So it's going to say caller ID lookup source down here. You see where it says caller ID lookup source? From caller ID lookup source, I'm going to choose repair. Now, what's going to happen is every time I receive a phone call, it's going to look it up in the repair shop or database. Now, the really cool part about this, which is one, another thing that I bitched at Troy about forever, that guy is a really, really good sport. Because, I mean, again, I would have told myself to go fuck myself with the amount of features I asked the guy for, is it's going to show the status of the ticket as well. So check this out. So I'm going to make myself a new ticket with my uh, ticketing software. I'm going to make myself a new ticket for myself, right? So I'm just going to show you how this works. So I'm going to make a new ticket. And uh, I'm going to have to do this sucks. I'm using my personal phone, which means I'm going to have to block out my number because I know that people are going to start trying to call me. It's a pain in the ass to do that in Vegas, but fine. So let's just switch over here. I'm going to type in my number, which means I have to delete stuff later. Blah. All right, I'm going to type in my number up here. So I have to delete all that because a bunch of shit popped out. So I'm in here as Jack Bauer, which is obviously not my name. I'm going to make a new ticket for Jack Bauer, and now I have to cut, I have to cut out my number in a bunch of different places. Great. So I'm going to say douchebag... Hardware, brain dead, create ticket. Skip the, I have to delete my number again. And I have to delete my number again. So we scroll down and we see my ticket, right? Now watch what happens when I use my cell phone to call the store. So first thing I have to do is find my cell phone because I always lose it. Now, I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the status of the ticket. I have to delete some of these statuses here because some of them have stuff in it that you probably shouldn't see. So let's say I put it in Steve's name, right? So I usually have stuff in Steve's name anytime that it's that it's a douchebag. So I'll do like basic customer service, but anytime it's something that requires explaining shit or bargaining or blah, 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 I just put it in his name because I don't, I don't want to fucking deal with it. That's his job. So let's say it's in the Steve status, right? So... I'm going to drag my phone over here so that you can see what happens when I make a phone call. So oh, and I'm going to try to get the camera to zoom in on the phone, which is probably going to be sad. So I'm going to call. I'm going to call the store here. See? So it, I'm going to have to delete the part with my, my, my fucking number, but S... Jack Bauer. So status, name, status, and name. This is really, really cool for a number of reasons. Um, so the first is I may not want to pick up the phone for every single fucking person who calls. There are calls where I'm going to want to pick, there, there are calls where I'm going to want to pick up the phone. So let's say it's a vendor that I've been trying to get a hold of for the past two weeks that I legitimately want to do business with. I will pick up the phone as soon as I see that. Let's say that I see it's in status Steve. It's probably in status Steve because it requires bargaining or explaining something that's unpleasant or well, usually either bargaining or explaining something that's unpleasant. I'm, I'm not picking up. Fuck that. I, like, I'll pick up if there's nobody else here, but if, he, if I see that he's here, it's just going to take him a few extra steps to walk to the phone. Fuck that. I'll let him pick it up. I don't feel like, you know, because anything that requires bargaining or explaining unpleasant shit means that I have to stop what I'm doing in the microscope for about 10 minutes. And I, I realize that that is part of the job, but it's just a part of the job that I don't feel like doing. That's why I hired somebody who's, who's very technically proficient, who doesn't fix anything all day just so that they can deal with those annoying conversations. If I see that it's, um, let's say that it's 801, right? And I see that it's waiting approval. I may pick up the phone even though we close at 8 if it's 8.01 because I see waiting approval. Now, if I see that it says wait, pick up fixed and it's 8.01 and we close at 8, I never pick that up. The reason I never pick that up is because I know what it is. It's going to be somebody who goes, hey, um, 
I'm just five minutes away. I'm five minutes away. Uh, would you be able to just stay a little bit late for me? And No, because that, that, that never works because you're never five minutes away. You're in Brooklyn or you're in Queens or you're like, no, get the, that, 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 that happens all the time. For the first year, I used to get tricked by that shit all the time. Can you just stay open five minutes late just for me? 9.45 rolls around. An hour and 45 minutes later, I call them. It's like, oh, yeah, I figured out that I probably wouldn't be able to make it. Sorry. It's like, yeah, thanks for calling me back, asshole. So I, if I see wait pickup fixed and it's 7.59 and we close at 8, I'm not picking that up. Because that, 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 that's a trap. That is a trap. See what they say is they say, well, I'll say I'm, we're closed. It's 8.01. And, they'll, and sometimes wise asses will do some shit like, well, you're not closed because you picked up the phone. That's a great attitude to have. That's a fucking great attitude to have when you're trying to ask somebody for a favor. To, instead of like being nice to be a prick. But I digress. This is a great feature. Uh, let's say that I see that um, so like I took something in. And that um, I said this will be done in 24 hours. One hour passes, and it's and I see that it says new, and I receive a phone call. I'm not going to pick that up because it's like, hey, is it done yet? Hey, what do you think is going? No, 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 no. Let him deal with that. That's fine. He can deal with that because he's paid to deal with that. I don't want to interrupt what I. I may be working on that person's device right now. I could be working on that person's device right now, and I'm literally interrupting the work so that they can ask when it will be done. It's like, well, it will be done faster if you weren't calling. But because I have this system where I know not just the person calling, but the status of it, we know who should pick up the phone immediately. Let's say it's in status, shipped. Now, Steve could pick up the phone, I could pick up the phone, or the person who actually shipped it could pick up the phone. So if it's a question like, hey, did it ship today, or will it ship tomorrow, the person best fit to answer that question would be the person who shipped it. So now, the pers- everybody looks at the phone to see who's calling, what's up, and we see that it's uh, something about a shipping, or it's, it's something that just shipped, so the person who just shipped it can pick up the phone and say, hey, yeah, the mailman just picked it up 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I know it doesn't show his scans in, but that's because they scanned it in at the post office, but it did go out today. Or, no, it didn't go out today, I'm sorry. This way you can explain to your customer what's going on with it. It's, just, it's a great system. When you know who, not just who's calling, but what the status is of that person, you then know how to efficiently deal with it. And it, it's helped us tremendously. But here's the part that's really, really cool. Here's the part that, above all else, that I love. So let's check out my ticket with, uh, with Jack Bauer here that I made. So check this out. This is the ticket. Now I'm going to refresh it and look at what it says. It says that I called. It says that I, not only does it say that I called, it says the fucking time that I called, which is really, really cool. This, I love this stuff. I lo- it not only does it say when they called, it says the time. And then I can look up this up in the call recording system. I can see what type of call there was. So I'm not going to go through the call recording system here because I went through the call recording system in a previous video. So this makes it easy to look them up in the call recording system. So I can say, okay, this is their number. This is the time they called. Let's find you in the call recording system. So, for example, let's say somebody comes in and says, hey, uh, we left this with you. Um, you never called us. When we called you, you didn't pick, you know, you, uh, you never picked up the phone. When we finally got a hold of you, you said that you were going to hold it for us, and then you didn't. This happens all the time. What people do when they think they're dealing with a big company is they feel that the company is so big that nobody kind of communicates with one another and that nobody's going to care about the truth so that they kind of create their own truth. And it's a habit that a lot of people get into. My mother used to do this all the time. She just felt that if I take myself seriously enough and I say X, Y, and Z, that the company will actually believe that X, Y, and Z is true. And you just have to stay that so steadfast in your lie that they start to believe it. So she would believe her own lie. Therefore, since she actually believes it, now the store that she's trying to rip off would have to believe it. Like, my mother used to do all this type of ridiculous shit. Like, she would, um, like, if it was, if it was my birthday, and uh, which, let's say one of my toys broke, she would buy that toy again from Toys R Us, um, put my broken toy in the box, which was like three years old, return it, and actually say that that toy was the one that was in the box. Like, just ridiculous shit. But if she believed herself, she thought that the company would actually believe her too. It just, so that, that I'm always kind of on the lookout for that stuff. And people do this stuff all the time. So they'll say all that. And the great part about this system is I can say, okay, give me a minute. Usually I can tell when they're lying because most of the time when I say, give me one minute, I'm more than happy to look into this. Let me just, uh, you know, you may be right. So let me just make sure you get what's fair. 
if they interrupt me and say and just start screaming, I immediately know that they're full of shit because they don't want me to look into it. If they're right, then they will. So I'll go back to my office, I'll scroll through, and I'll go, you actually only called us once six months ago, and you hung up immediately, you didn't say anything, you never responded to any of our calls. It's great, because then I can immediately say like this stuff. Or let's say they say, I called you 20 times, and sometimes I'll even cut them off and go, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I'm like, so is this your, uh, or I'll go, is this your phone number? And I'll read the number. I'll go, yeah, that's where I called you from. I'm like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Get the f- no, 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 no. Because it's, it's, it's always the same thing when it comes, and everybody who owns this type of business gets it, that, you know, the whole idea of, um, of uh, people showing up one year, two years, three years. I had one couple, and this is one that I legitimately felt bad for. They came back three years later. They went to Guatemala on vacation. Somehow they got stuck in a prison in Guatemala for several years, and they weren't able to come pick up their computer. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I felt fucking terrible. I felt very, very bad for what happened to them, but it's like, you know, what I, I, I left this thing here for a year and a half. My policy is 45 days. And I don't start throwing shit out on day 46. That's not really how it works. I throw stuff out when I look to my right and I have no new slots. So once I have no new slots, I'll look through the slots. I'll go to the oldest ticket in the slot. And that will usually be some shit that's been here for a year and a half or two years. I'll start calling and calling and calling and saying, hey, you've ignored all our past calls. Would you like to come pick this up before we throw it away? And if they don't, then, you know, junk. But yeah, this is a really great system because it allows you to really turn bullshit into facts. Like you, you, you can start disputing people not based on what you think happens, but you can start dealing with these disputes based on what actually happened. And my favorite is when I wind up going to the call recording on one of those days that that person says, I called and you said you would hold it and I hit play and they're in the room and it's like, oh, hi, uh, have you, you haven't thrown away my stuff yet. No, I haven't thrown it away, even though you're about one week past the date. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I know that you should have probably just thrown it away right now. I'm going to come pick it up tomorrow. I promise. I'm going to pick it up tomorrow. Okay, sure. And then a year later, they come in and say, You promised you were going to hold it for me. And it's like, yeah. For one fucking day. And you understood it. So anyway, I hope that this is uh, helpful for you. If you do use a repair shopper and you are looking into changing your phone system over, this is a really, really great way to deal with incoming clients. And again, I know that I'm approaching it from a particularly negative and humorous perspective, but believe it or not, I actually do use this positively. It's great when you can, it's great. There are people that are using my window as a mirror. That's just really creepy. Hi, creepers. Anyway, so there, it, it's really great when you can uh, use this system so that the person who should be picking up the phone picks up the phone. You can get faster response time to your customers. You can get the proper information to your customers on time. You can have more people picking up the phone because you can have somebody picking up the phone for general tech questions but not picking it up when it's going to be a long-winded, annoying conversation. It's just a great, it's a great way to deal with everything. And this is one of the ways that I've managed to have a business with far fewer employees than other businesses that do this. And and still get by without, you know, winding up losing my shit. And that's that for today. I hope you learned something.